Hello students. So let us start our discussion. In the previous video, we have discussed uh, various condition, uh, uh, various conditional or uh, conditional base branch or VFs, uh, and uh, we have also discussed the numerical example that how uh, arithmetic operation will result into a uh, uh, change of certain uh, flag. So uh, let me start our discussion. So in this tutorial, uh, we will start our discussion with uh, subroutine and program interrupt. Now, uh, previously we have uh, seen in micro program that uh, whenever we will go with the branch and save return address or call or return, so those kind of instruction uh, will result into the subroutine. Now, whenever uh, re there will be a requirement of uh, uh, same code for multi multiple time at that time, a subroutine will be implemented. Okay, so uh, what subroutine will do? It will uh, help us in uh, code redundancy. Okay, so it will help us to eliminate the duplicate code from our code. Then uh, it will also save the memory. Okay, why? Because duplicate code will be eliminated and uh, it will make code simple. Now, if you try to recall uh, some of the instruction, whichever we have discussed, for example, uh, branch and save return address, then uh, whenever there will be interrupt, then how it will be uh, managed by CPU, so all those things. So, uh, there we have seen that most of the time whenever we will uh, call the uh, subroutine, okay, the value of program counter will be uh, changed. But uh, there will be different. There is a difference between uh, jump and uh, subroutine. Okay, in jump we will not do not store the return address. While in case of uh, subroutine we will store the return address. So which will help us to uh, again resume the instruction uh, from where we have uh, hold the uh, execution. So here um, in this topic we will try to discuss that how CPU will uh, implement this. Uh, subroutine call mechanism clear so um, let me try to draw a memory so you can have idea that uh, how it will be implemented so let us assume that this is memory okay and uh, this area is given to a particular process let's say uh, so this portion of memory is given to this process clear process or program whatever you say let's say we will give it name p1 okay and then uh, on top there will be instruction portion where all the details will be stored uh, related to the instruction okay means all the command or you can say all the programming statement whatever we have written or uh, all the instruction it will it, it will be stored in this first portion okay and it will be managed by program counter then all the variables which are we uh, which we are using or which will be used by this uh, instruction it will be stored into the second portion okay and it will be used by uh, you can say the uh, or it will be pointed by address register uh, but uh, uh, addition to this we will have one more portion that is known as stack so all process will have two type of stack okay the first one is let's say this will be the data stack where we will store all the data and then there will be the uh, another stack that is known as process stack okay this is data stack and this is process stack so uh, let me uh, explain you that how this uh, process stack will be useful now uh, uh, before that let me tell you what is interrupt interrupt means disturbance so whenever uh, uh, cpu is executing or cpu is going with the normal execution or normal instruction okay and if there is any request from input or output device to perform any uh, input output operation okay at that time interrupt will be generated now uh, we are having various approaches uh, like uh, one approach that we do not uh, handle the interrupt at all uh, next approach we will pause the uh, execution uh, we will pause the current execution and then we will uh, start with the uh, uh, subroutine or routine of uh, let's say input output and the last approach that uh, we will suspend the execution of a current process and then we will go with the interrupt and then we can restart the uh, process execution okay so first and last approach are 
not uh, preferable why because in the both case we will uh, lose something in first case we will lose the interrupt and in second case we will lose the uh, process uh, or you can say executed uh, executed instruction so the second approach is uh, preferable so what will happen in case of uh, interrupt so in case of interrupt whatever current status of process is there it will be pushed into the stack and then um, uh, whatever uh, subroutine or for interrupt is generated by uh, whatever device uh, so that particular subroutine will be managed so uh, in in simple case we can say that uh, we will have various modules of assembly language program so whenever uh, there will be any interrupt or uh, sorry then whenever there will be any input output request okay it will cause an interrupt and uh, then uh, interrupt will be handled and uh, whatever subroutine will be there for that particular io device or whatever module will be there for particular io device it will be uh, utilized okay so uh, normally there will be a table which will store the detail of uh, of all the subroutine means there will be uh, entry like let's say uh, there will be first uh, entry it will be for keyboard so and there will be the address of the keyboard uh, subroutine then there will be mouse then uh, there will be interrupt for uh, mouse then there will be let's say printer so there will be address of a printer subroutine likewise there is a scanner and then there will be the interrupt for scanner a sub uh, address for uh, you can say scanner subroutine then there will be monitor and then there will be the address of a monitor subroutine so this is known as isrt interrupt uh, service routine table okay so um, uh, this table will help us to get the detail of a particular uh, instruction uh, sorry uh, get the address of particular routine which will uh, execute the instruction of particular device so how uh, it will be managed so for that uh, this process stack will be used so uh, for uh, for that in stack we are having two operation push and pop so how push operation will be implemented sp is equals to sp minus one then uh, memory of sp equals to uh, program counter and then in pc we will load the effective address of a particular device okay so here there will be the effective address of a particular device or routine okay uh, and then there will be the pop so how it will be done pc equals to m of sp and then m of sp then sp is equals to sp plus one now dear learners please remember this is the memory stack okay this is not cpu or register stack so uh, here while we will perform the push operation uh, stack pointer will be decremented and whenever we will perform the pop operation uh, stack pointer will be incremented so actually how this will work let's say uh, currently uh, we are executing something and uh, there is a program interrupt okay so before handling the request of let's say a mouse okay which detail should be stored so previously whatever we have discussed uh, there we have uh, considered that we will store only value of program counter okay but this won't be sufficient why because let's say there is a partial execution of process and if we will store only the program counter then whatever value we will get after the interrupt it will uh, whatever cpu register value we will get after the interrupt okay it may be different so uh, this is not uh, favorable so along with the program counter we should also store all processor register okay and along with all processor register we should also store the status of accumulator okay which is also known as psw okay processor status word which is collection of various sign uh, various flag which we have discussed like uh, overflow then carry then sign and then zero okay so those uh, then interrupt enable uh, then r which is which we have discussed in interrupt cycle then input flag output flag so uh, along with all the processor register we should also store the process status word or uh, and program counter okay now let us try to understand that uh, 
how this detail will be uh, stored or how an interrupt will be managed okay so uh, let me clear all these things so we can discuss that how interrupt will be managed now if you try to uh, recall okay then in interrupt cycle we have seen uh, we have seen that uh, uh, once the execution of any instruction is started okay then uh, interrupt cannot be managed okay so if you want to check whether the, there is an interrupt or not then we will uh, we will go with that uh, cycle uh, after fetch okay so let me try to uh, explain you that uh, how it will be done so let's say that uh, so execution will be done for interrupt it will be in parallel to uh, uh, let's say execution phase of instruction okay so while the execution of instruction is going on at that time we will check whether interrupt is enabled or not and if there is interrupt then we will check interrupt is because of input flag or if it is because of output flag and once the execution of instruction is over okay then in next cycle we will go with the interrupt cycle sorry okay so uh, then we will store the value of program counter and all this thing okay so uh, whenever there is a execution of normal process in if there is a uh, let's say interrupt okay then uh, first of all all the cpu register will be stored then uh, program status what will be stored and then program counter will be pushed into the stack okay so here let's say we are handling the current whatever value of the pro current program counter will be there let's say current value of program counter is 11 okay so 11 will be stored okay and a new value of uh, let's say there is interrupt because of keyboard so the value of subroutine address of uh, uh, that uh, keyboard will be loaded into the program counter okay and it will start execution now while we are managing the subroutine of keyboard okay there is a another interrupt because of uh, input device mouse so at that time let's say currently we are executing the instruction in keyboard subroutine 200 okay and we are getting the interrupt request from mouse so this 200 will be again uh, stored into the stick then uh, let's say if again we are having uh, request while we are managing this request uh, we are having uh, interrupt request from printer so whatever uh, current mouse at uh, mouse subroutine address let's say in mouse subroutine we are on location 300 so that 300 will be stored into the process stack and then that uh, uh, interrupt will be managed once it is managed then uh, uh, pop operation will be performed so execution will resume with the interrupt of mouse then uh, once the interrupt of mouse is over then uh, again pop will be done so then the interrupt for keyboard will be managed and then once the interrupt of uh, keyboard routine is over then again pop will be done so this will transfer the control to uh, previous process where we have uh, paused the execution okay so this is how interrupt will be managed in detail we will discuss this in input output organization while we will discuss various input output operation now uh, let me tell you that how many types of interrupts are there so there are three type of interrupt uh, external interrupt next is uh, internal interrupt and third one is uh, let's say software interrupt which type of interrupt will be considered as an external interrupt so the interrupt uh, which is caused by uh, you can say external device or peripheral hardware 
ओके सो दैट इज नॉन एज एक्सटर्नल इंटरप्ट ओके फॉर एग्जाम्पल इंटरप्ट इज कोस बाय की बोर्ड माउस और यू कैन से प्रिंटर सो दैट इज अ एग्जाम्पल ऑफ एक्सटर्नल इंटरप्ट ओके की बोर्ड देन माउस देन प्रिंटर देन वी कैन से स्कैनर वॉट इज इंटरनल इंटरप्ट इंटरप्ट विच इज कोस बाय सी पी यू इट सेल्फ फॉर एग्जाम्पल डिवाइड बाय जीरो okay which will be caused by uh, cpu itself then uh, uh, let's say in register stack there is a overflow stack overflow and stack underflow so this will be also caused uh, this will be also considered as an internal interrupt now what is software interrupt Uh, in linux operating system whenever you want to use any uh, system resource at that time you have to switch from uh, user mode to uh, supervisor mode or super user mode okay so at that time uh, that switching okay switching from uh, user mode to super user mode will be considered as a software uh, interrupt so uh, switching or you can say uh, system call so where we require system resource so at that time uh, this uh, interrupt whatever will uh, means this interrupt is known as uh, software interrupt so clear so in this video we will keep up to this uh, so in next video we will try to discuss what is the difference between uh, reduced instruction set and uh, uh, complex instruction set uh, computer so uh, that's it we will start our discussion in next video thank you